Hey, good morning. This is Greta Ross with Mind Body Soul Shift. And this morning, we are still working uh, with your health matters. And so I have a very, very, very special guest today. Um, actually, she is my classmate and uh, a dear friend, but I'm going to let her introduce herself. So please tell the audience who you are and what you do. My name is Mayoshi Gordon. I, my hometown is Rayford, North Carolina. Yes. I live in Orlando, Florida now. Uh, was born and raised. I have 12. There was a total of 13 siblings. Right now we have 10 siblings alive. Thank God. Mm. Um, my mom and father, beloved, is in heaven. Um, we have a loving family where I grew up from. I, My hometown, I can't say enough of Rayford, North Carolina. <laughs> Uh, it's embraced by not only my family, but my genuine friends, and especially my classmates of 76. Yes. Shout out to Class them. Of 76, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I do operate a 501c nonprofit organization, and uh, right now we're going five years strong. And what we do is help patients with myositis, breast cancer, and now mental health awareness geared towards emotional abuse. Um. A little bit about me and my background. I have medical background in radiology. I worked there for 25, 30 years total. And then when I had breast cancer diagnosed, I went into human resources for five years. So I have total years of 35 years in employment, but retired, but however, I'm back in the workforce, kinda, but it's my passion of helping people. And so um, when God gives you that divine intervention of what is my purpose in life, that is my purpose in life is helping others. Yes. I try to give them as much inspiration as I can on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. knowing that with my strong faith in God uh, through this pandemic, I can say I, I have grown closer. It's such tight closeness that you can't mm -hmm. get anything between me and God. My faith is very strong. I have to say I was birthed an author during the pandemic. I had quiet time when I went down for the pandemic. So uh, I always wanted to write a book. I told all my siblings in my family, but it never was the opportunity at that time. Mm. But when we did the big project of the COVID-19 with the our nonprofit right now, Clyde Huff, uh, I'm very appreciative of all my board members. He is right now, the NP is president of United Divine Purpose, why I carry the other part of the legacy in giving the communities at large and across um, the states and nationally, a platform where they know um, women of different nationalities, especially women of color. Yes. Um, we need more inspiration in our life more than ever uh, in these unprecedented times. And I have to say, men as well, because the disease that, uh, that affects me myself is men and women. And um, I must say, through inspiration of friends, my uh, specialists, my clergy, without them, my ins it's impossible to live the, the life I live and where I come from. Yeah. Um, I could tell my story forever, but I'm going to stop right now and see if there's any more questions you would like to ask. Well, um, so you were diagnosed um, in, in what year were you diagnosed with your, um, with your cancer? I was diagnosed uh, cancer. I was diagnosed in 2006, December. Believe it or not, uh, it's unbelievable. Did not even know I had a mammogram my annual September. I needed more oblique views. I didn't think it was anything. I've always worked in the medical field. I said, I'll let it wait for a moment. And then December, I followed up with the oblique views as they requested by radiologists. And, and then that's when I found out I had DCIS, mm -hmm. uh, which is ductal uh, carcinoma and incentives. But I'm thankful that it was found on my annual exam. I can't express to everyone yes. to make sure that you get your M annual mammograms on time. And that saved my self, that saved my life. It saved the disease from spreading. Mm -hmm. And so as of now, I'm a 14 year, I would say breast cancer, not only a survivor, but a conqueror. Yes, yes. And you, you look amazing. Now, tell us a little bit about how 
um, the disease actually affected your your health, not just the disease itself, but did it have like a trickling effect? Was there, there other things that, that started to happen from from that from that point? I would say, first of all, I was diagnosed with mycitis uh, in 1995 and I, no one really knows what my side is, but I'm, I'm going to break it down in just a layman terms so you understand. Okay. Okay. It's good. where your good cells attack your body. It deteriorates your muscles. Mm -hmm. And so with me, mine's that were in my little legs. I have polymyositis. There's different types of myositis. Uh, there's dermomyositis, inclusive body myositis. There's uh, juvenile uh, myositis. Uh, there's different types of myositis, but uh, even with that, it could go to in a correlate, correlation with connective tissue disease, also with peripheral neuropathy. So as I go along with life, it has changed my life. Uh, in 1995, with the diagnosis, it was a, a wham to me because I worked in the medical field and how I found out I had it was, I was out in the front yard playing basketball with my son and I fell for no reason. So you're thinking that maybe I'm tri trying to be hooped with him, but uh, that didn't happen. And so um, then the next day I was going to the mailbox. It was beginning to rain and I began to run back into the house and I fell again. And me knowing that I worked in the medical field, that was abnormal. Yeah. So I immediately made an appointment with my primary care the next day and told my employer that I could not make it that day, that I would have to go to the doctor immediately. And so I went to my primary care he immediately did an ANA test, which are anti-nuclear antibody tests. I had to wait up. It was about a couple of weeks before the diagnosis came back. And my titter count was high. I was very fortunate that I was referred to the best university um, in the United States, Duke University Medical Center. Mm -hmm. And there I obtained a specialist of rheumatologist that was excellent, exceptional as this day. I go at, back at times. But I have to say at each relocation that I've gone to, I've been blessed by God to have great specialists in my life. Good. Good. And that is what's helped me to be healthy. What I want people to know, it's just not what I'm doing, it's what they guide me to do. Yes. And so with um with the my side is part is very not to say the my most side effects are fatigue. Yes. But in the very beginning, um, as you put up the flyer for everyone to see on the platforms, I did gain weight. I had to go on prednisone, prednisone mm -hmm. higher doses. I gained like 95 pounds. It was very discouraging to me because I always had high self-esteem. And at that <laughs> point, my self-esteem was lowering. I have to tell yes. you. Yes, yes. Um, because, you know, the type of person I was in high school, I've always been a small person. Yes. I was a runner. I've always been into exercise and still am today. So that was very staggering to me. But with my rheumatologist at hand, she always say when I went, say, I gained more weight and I gained more weight every time I visit her. She said, oh, but you're beautiful, voluptuous. <laughs> that made me feel good. So I want people to know, even though you look like that on the outside, but it's mm -hmm. what's on the inside that makes That's us feel right. Some things we can't control, some medications we still have to take day to day, which I do, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. not the amount of which I was on. I have to say one of the top effects of my um, symptoms is stress. I have to keep that to a minimum. Mm -hmm. If I do not, my disease will come out. I'm in remission right now. My prayer with God is for me to remain there. I know when to pull back. Mm -hmm. uh, you see on the social platform sometimes I say, um, unavailable, temporary unavailable, my mind, body, and soul needs rest. That's yes. what that means. It means self-care. Self-care and self-love doesn't mean you've been selfish. It means you're taking care of yourself. That's what it means. I have graciously learned to say no on my journey. Mm -hmm. It does not mean no forever. It means no, right, not right at this time because yeah. my body needs healing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say during this journey, the last, since I've written my book, how it came about, I asked God in the pandemic, I had that quiet time and was it time to write my book? And my answer came two weeks later in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning. God, it was like a quiet voice, a broken, but still a masterpiece. 
I had just come out of divorce. It was very uh, stressful for me. Mm. That was my second marriage. I was looking to God to be married forever. I upheld my vows, but sometimes things don't work out because the other person, you can't control them. Only thing you can do is ask God to help you get through it. Mm-hmm. It's trials and tribulations that come in any of our lives, but it's how you handle it. What I did, I leaned on my faith with God. I leaned on my family, my family and my son. My son is the greatest sacrifice of my life, and he is endearment to me forever, more into eternity. He is an individual that knows me from inside and out. Mm-hmm. He calls me mother. <laughs> Not mom, but mother since he was birthed. I don't know how that came about. But everybody say, how does he, how he call you mother? But he's always has been. He has a great relationship with his father, even though uh, in the very beginning, um, his father, my former husband, had a drug addiction. But I have to give him, um, he's very endearment to me because he went to get help. He went 90 days in rehab. My son. I never knew about my husband was on drugs for my husband until he was 18 years old. Yeah. And that's when I let my husband tell him. Mm-hmm. And right now, have, they have the best relationship. And that's, that's what good. I want people to know. Please don't involve your children in your marriage problems. No. It brings more stress on the family. Yeah, it does. And so I truly try to do is keep them together. That's why I drive home mental health. It's very important for us. You learn those coping skills of what to do and what not to do. Mm-hmm. And so with the psychologist at hand, at your fingertip, and I'm going to say this because you, if you go to Google, you'll find out the truth. Black Americans are the worst of seeking medical advice when it comes to a psychologist. Yeah. Doesn't mean we're crazy. There, we have our clergy to go to, but he's a clergy on the Christian entity side. Mm-hmm. But when we need a psychologist, they own how we learn how to cope on a day-to-day basis, meaning that we keep our stress level down. Yes, yes. And so with that being said, that's what keeps us healthy. healthy. I can't stress that enough. Each walk of my life, even first form of marriage, I had a psychologist in Bedford, North Carolina. I'm gonna name her out, Dr. Lilia Foster, outstanding. I would advise anyone to look her up who, who needs assistance there. Down here is Miss um, Patricia Trim. Uh, it's called Trim Counseling Service, outstanding. She helped me get through my darkest moments of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, my second marriage, I didn't expect to end, almost gave my life away. My health was degrading. Mm-hmm. And that's when I had to say, God, yeah. it was a stopping point for me to reflect and say, I can't give my life away. Even my specialists say either you want to live or you want to die. Yes. So if you read my book, um, mm-hmm. I get emotion every time I think about it. Broken, but still a masterpiece. Yes. That is the right title God gave me. Because if you look at the title of the book and you look at the picture in the book, I was broken during the time I took that photo. Yeah. Was your photography in Field in <laughs> North Carolina. He's the best photography too. Um, he did even really know I was broken at that time. Mm. But uh, when I came home in 2019, December, my family really didn't even know I was um, illegally divorced. Not legally separated at that time. I was headed for divorce in January. And so I stepped out on faith. And right now, I reflect on my life 365 days later and look where I am today. Yes. That yes. is what the miracle. I'm a, I'm a walking testimony of what God yes, can you do are. with your health yes. and what God can do by faith. Mm-hmm. Because just faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. And and you know what, Miles, let me say this. Um, I believe that um, you hearing and then obeying, I, I mm-hmm. think that, you know, because we, we have to do our part. And, mm-hmm. and that's, the, that, that, that's what I want people to understand. God can do anything. Yes. But we have a part to play in that. It's like, you know, when you got diagnosed with the disease that you had, you could have just, you know, just done the bare minimum. But you you decided you wanted to live. I did. You, you wanted to be well. I wanted to and, be well. And, exactly. And that's the thing. I want people to, to understand that if you have a desire to be well, 
between God's hand and what you can do can bring you to the point of where you are right now. And I'm not saying that you, I'm not saying that you've arrived, but what I'm saying is, is that you, you know what to do. You know how far to go. You know that if the cabin pressure releases the mask, you know to put yours on first before you assist someone else. You know that. That's correct. And see, and see, see, the thing is, is that we don't, we don't apply that. That's why we get so worn down and we get so, so um, worn out and stressed out because we don't know that we have to put our mask on first so yes. that we can assist other people. And you're so right because you push and you, we push and we push through daily life. We have to, we have to work. We have to take care of our families. Yes. We have other things at hand. We're dealing with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with, with the economic crisis at hand. Yes. Uh, we're dealing with many things these, the, the past year that's unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, even with our nonprofit, we're not being able to have the funds coming in, Vince, but yes. we were able to maintain and still stay on top still get through this, still assist patients as best as we can. And that's the beauty of it all. We, ha I have to, um, <laughs> I always have to say this, the board of directors are outstanding. <laughs> uh, with you, you named the blind profit, especially uh, our CFO, CFOO, that is Clyde Huff also. He does a, a outstanding spreadsheet. Right now, behind the scenes, I'm doing the organization taxes. Mm. People really don't understand what I do behind the scene. Yeah. Um, when I come off the platform, I have a total of seven platforms plus my website. And you see that for yourself, Greta. Yes, yes. You see I'm everywhere. I, I have everywhere. to go. <laughs> I have to go. It's not yeah. that I don't, I don't have time to conversate like I would love to. It's yeah. not that I don't want to. It's just that my time is of the essence. And I have to get back at my desk. Right now, I'm doing my taxes. There's a total of five which our organization has to be certified. If you do not, you're fined. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the responsibility is. Yeah. And talking about pressure, that's pressure. Yes, yes. Yeah, and stress. It's very yes. stressful. Yeah, it's yes. very stressful during that time mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why I have to draw back a little bit. And even if I have to go down a day, it be itself, it's not that I don't want to be out front. It's just that I can't. Because I can be talking to you right now, but when I get off this platform, I may have to go lay down an hour. No one sees that. Right. But I know how to take care of myself. I've learned yes. that. And so that's what I want everyone else to know. It's okay to say no. Not a good time right now. Yes. We can't be everything to everybody. No, we cannot. And we try, we try so hard. Yeah. And we try too we, hard to do that. I have done that to the extreme of almost <laughs> losing myself. Yes. And I tell people that because you lose yourself because that's when the stress arrives and then your health is out of link. And we we put on more medications, more medications, more medications. And that's a true fact because I yeah. have done it. Yeah. I have been in the depression stage. I've been in anxiety mm -hmm. stage. I've been in, in asthma stage. I've been in a panic stage. But no one knows that but God. I have on that mask as I used to have on, but mm -hmm. I don't anymore. Right. That's the difference. Well, have, right have, have you eliminated God. have you eliminated the medication for all those those ailments um, since you since you have been because you sound like you have been freed from all those things. No, I can't say free from all of them. There's some I have to maintain the rest of my life. Okay. What, what I want people to understand, the disease I live with is myositis. It's a chronic, mm. invisible, incurable disease. I will have this disease for the rest of my life. Wow. It's how you control it. It's mm -hmm. how you pace yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with this disease, I have to be on a drug called methotrexate. It's a chemotherapy drug. Thank God I still have my hair. Thank God I, had, I do. I've been on this drug for 26 years. Wow. Wow. Now my hair did thin in the very beginning, but my, you see my hair is that my mm -hmm, head is mm -hmm. hair full is where my hair yeah. is thick. Yeah. I thank God for that. But I also thank God for my hairstylist because she usually gives me different deep uh, conditioning treatments for my hair. Yeah. And also uh, the drug I have to be on 
um, is prednisone. It's very low dose. It's three milligrams. I'm almost off of it. Mm -hmm. But you cannot immediately come off of it because right. of the, your adrenaline glands. Mm -hmm. Your adrenaline glands get addicted to it. And yeah. that your adrenaline glands control your blood pressure. And I have a double whammy with my family. It's a hereditary issue with cholesterol and also with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So with prednisone, it does give you high blood pressure as well as one of the high side effects. But with the hereditary disease in my family, my father, um, disease of myocardial infarction, my brother of a stroke, my oldest brother, Roosevelt. And then there's other siblings that have high blood pressure. Mm. And I also had a baby sister deceased uh, with heart problems. So both of my parents with heart disease. So I have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have to, there is a drug. I'm allergic to all the statins medications because of the myositis disease. Uh, and I want everybody to hear me. Those with myositis disease, that the statins affect your muscles that deteriorate the more. My rheumatologist taught me very well about that as well as my cardiologist. I would say they're very good at what they do. I am on a drug called Repatha. It's a sure click injection. I take that every other Tuesday. I do my injections myself as well as the methotrexate. Thank God I've been in the medical field. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so um, that repath the drug, I'm very fortunate to be on it. That drug is 1800 and some dollars every two weeks. Wow. But through foundations, through my cardiologist, they were able to assist me with different discounts to help me. Um, I'm very fortunate in that matter that you do your homework on the internet mm -hmm. and you talk to your physicians about how can you get discounts on medications. And another thing I want to say medical insurance company will decline you and say, no, you can't have that drug, but you have to be an advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to push hard and hard and harder. On the repath the drug, I had to go to Congress to get it. Mm. Wow. I don't stop. I'm an advocate. And when I say I'm an advocate for myself, I'm an advocate for others too. Yes. Because if you don't be, the answer will be no, and you'll be deceased. That's like another one. Yeah. fatality. And I'm not going to be one of those in no time soon by the um, grace of God. I'm going to be a fighter. I'm going to be a fighter until the day I die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you definitely will be that because you yeah. have proven, you have proven that. And, and, and just looking at where you are right now, but let me ask you a question about the, the medication that you've been on um, and, and may have gotten off, but um, what, what type of side effects other than, I know that you said you gained the, the 95 pounds. Did you have any other side effects um, other than your hair thinning out in the beginning and, and the weight gain? Yeah, it's nausea and vomiting. Um, you have um, hallucinations from the prednisone, higher doses. Um, you be dizzy. Sometimes you feel like getting up, sometimes you don't. You have depression, mm -hmm. you have anxiety, you have panic attacks. So all those things, you have to present those side effects to your physician on how you feel. Right. If you don't, that's when you have declines even more so because you cannot remain on that particular drug. Right. That is what you took another drug mm -hmm, that better mm -hmm. suits your body. And so um, you learn your body with the different little side effects. Um, I have to say the opium drugs, like what pain, I'm allergic to every single one. The only thing I can take is Tylenol, extra strength, 500 milligrams. Mm. So I've learned to cope with pain. But as you reduce in stress in your life, mm -hmm. you <laughs> take less medications as many as you can. You go exactly by the physician's statements they make to you how to make your health better. I can't stress enough. Seek a psychologist to, to know coping skills that you can do because that makes you come off the medications faster mm -hmm. than not, you know, just maining on time. Look, believe me, I was on like 13 to 15 medication states in my book that I just written. That, that's, that's, that's not good for anyone. No, it's not. But you see, with all the stress I was under, yeah. let me say this here, all the pretending I was doing with that fake smile, <laughs> people do it, it cost all the time. You. Yeah. 
I'm not the only one on the social platforms that do it. No, no. We all no. do it. Um, mm -hmm. I have to say my attorney nailed it, uh, the one I just had. She came on Instagram one day. She said, I'm sick of everyone having these fake smiles. <laughs> and then, like, I can't say the word she said, the <laughs> S word. I had to put mm -hmm. you nailed because I've done the same thing. Yes, yes. Let's see, when you say you come on the social platforms now, I'm living my authentic life. I have yeah. no mask on my face. You see the real smile that I'm I'm the real my Oshu Lord yeah. that I used to be. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the days back in my high school years. <laughs> but I feel that the authentic me. Yes. I grew I must say when I was on all the medications, I was 195 pounds. Today I'm only 146 pounds in my size six. Wow, that's awesome. That is so awesome. But but you took care of yourself, though. And the thing is that, you know, like you said, some days you didn't feel like getting up. But, um, it, you know, being an advocate for yourself, you pushed yourself to still do something so that you wouldn't stay in that place. And, and that's the part that I want people to understand. I know you may not feel like it, but the sooner that you start moving, the better you're going to start to feel. That is correct. And I must say to everyone, it's not it's very hard. This is not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell anyone it is. This is a lifetime journey. I had a nutritionist, Dr. Um, Allison Halton Green, um, has the best Atlanta Medical Institute. Um, it's geared towards weight management. And I was referred to her by my cardiologist. She only did the nutrition part of, for me, nutritionist, how to eat properly. Yes. I found out bananas are not good for me. It gives me more inflammation in my body. Mm. Um, wow. That's what I tell everyone. If you can't learn how to eat properly, seek a nutritionist. And believe mm -hmm. it or not, most of the times in your medical plans, they are free. There's a consultation and they have, they even have like credits, like $50 credit if you, you go into that program. Right. And when I advise everyone to apply for their programs in their medical plans, mm -hmm. it will um, assist them in eating habits lifetime eatings. I can eat anything I want to, but it's always in moderation. My yes. son is so funny. He is amazing at fitness. He's always has been. Um, he has taught me how to eat. He always say, mother, put that bread down. My bread, my, my, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is, is bread. Um, <laughs> my ride or die partner since we were in the for decades. That's Karen Brown. Mm. She has been with me through a lot of my life. Yeah. Even I've been with her through many times of life. I have mm -hmm. many daring friends, including you, Greta. That when I look at you, you're so inspiring. And when you put up you before and your after image, you don't know. That's remember I inboxed you and told you you were, were a great inspiration to me. That's when I said, you know what? If Greta can do it, I got to push a little harder. That's right. Because you came up every day and it gave me inspiration. <laughs> and, Good. and that's what I want people to know. That it's not an easy journey. It's a day-to-day -day process. Yes, it cannot it happen overnight. I'm a living witness. It can't. Nope. It's a day-to-day. -day. It's a moment-to-moment. It, -to -moment. it like is. Like today, uh, I only ate just a little something. By lunch, I eat a little bit more, but at night, I don't eat heavy meals. I eat most of my heaviest meals in the morning and lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And I have to say at night when I do that, I sleep better too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And, it, and it all works together. We, we, have to, <clears throat> we have to stay in motion. We have to make sure that we're eating the right foods. And then we have to make sure that we're getting, that we're getting our rest. Because right. all three of those things play a big, huge part in our health. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we, we really take that for granted. You know, people will stay up late. They still have to get up early. And then then you have the sleep deprivation that, that right. starts to happen. And then you start to have more things that start to happen. Then you start to stress out more. So it has a trickling effect. You know, so, so I, you know, I, and, and I know that you can relate to this because like you said, sometimes you'll go in and lay down for an hour to just to rest, to rest your body mm -hmm. because rest is important for our, for our bodies. It, it gives our bodies a chance to heal itself. That's true. And, and our see, bodies will heal itself if in fact we actually put it in the right conditions. 
And we must do that. We can't push, but so hard. But I had to learn that. It doesn't come overnight. That's why I say the psychologist comes into play because they yeah. teach us that. You mm -hmm. know, we think we can, we think we know everything. We think, okay, we try so hard on these fad diets. <laughs> it doesn't work because nope. it's a fad diet. You're yeah. going to lose 10 pounds immediately. Then you're going to yes. gain it back because we're not yes. eating properly. Mm -hmm. What I've learned is portion sizes. Yes. I can eat anything I want to. If I have a dessert today, I can't have it to next week. That's how I go. Exactly. So I can, and my favorite is red lobster. You know that chocolate cake? <laughs> oh my goodness, a slice. But I have to cut it into four pieces so people understand. Yeah. You cut it into four pieces so when you have a dojiment for dessert, you mm -hmm. just take a slice out of the freezer and you just eat a piece of it. Exactly. And, you know, it's not like I got to eat. And I, what I learned to do, I, I stopped going to buffets, believe me. <laughs> it's too enticing because there's so much food. And yes, nine times yes. out of 10, you pray for that pricey food, but you're not going to eat all of it. Exactly. Nope. So if, you eat, if you've just ordered a regular meal, then whatever you put to the side, you can always bring home later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. through all my inspiration of friends, I have so many, and I named them in the book. But I have even my class of 76 have been so inspiring. Yes. I have not missed not one of my class reunions, um, alumni, when it comes to getting together, it's always a, it's always so meaningful because we look at each other and we see how we've gone through life and then you know. we're so inspiring to each other. <laughs> yeah. I know that. I may not see them all the time, but they are. Uh, I get on the platforms and I, I'm not able to do but hit and miss and I'm gone, but I do think of everyone all the time. I think of my hometown because that is the root in which I was raised. Yes, yes, I, absolutely. I mean, like I haven't been home now in a year, in a few months. I want to come home so bad, but I can't. Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah. With my family now, we do Zoom sessions with self me mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, because it's it's coping, and I have to tell everyone that I miss my family. Yeah, uh, you know, I thank God for placing my son. He came from Afghanistan uh, last year. You wouldn't believe last year. Year before last, it was in 2018. And I did not even know that God was going to place him down in the land of Florida. Wow. That's why wow. I put up there that by the grace of God, people don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. God yeah. destined to know what I was going to go through in my life, knew what was going to happen. <laughs> mm, mm, place mm, my son you, back from mm -hmm. Afghanistan. He lives wow. in the land of Florida, only 35 minutes away from me. You know, I can say as a single parent, I sacrificed everything I had in my being to make sure my child had an upbringing, which was right. Yes. I want his words and values to stand out. I, I did not want him to be uh, incarcerated. He was not. Me and his father always told him, if you go to jail, we're going to leave you there. I'm glad he didn't call you up. <laughs> say that. <laughs> and he has not. He has far exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Uh, with the job he has, I cannot expose that. But I never see anything about him is because of that. So everybody knows when you take an oath, you can't say anything. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so, um, I want to talk about him so much, but I can't. So <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. All said and done, he is my greatest sacrifice. Because yeah. I sacrificed for him, but God gave him right back to me where mm -hmm. I needed him the most right down here with me. He's right down here with me in the pandemic. I can't even go out sometimes. And he just like bought, just this, this past, I see yesterday, he bought five cases of water. Mother, and he gets on me, mother, why did you do that? Why are you so low? It's because I don't want to bother him in the end of the day. <laughs> but what I'm telling people is trusting in God. Oh, I can't express enough how I do now. I'm at 62 years old. We can say we knew God or know God, but you don't know him until you're at your lowest mm -hmm. point in your life in which I was. And that was with my health that I had to say, okay, Lord, mm -hmm. I let go and let God. And that's when God took over with my health. So so what, what was it about that change um how wh what was it about your thought process that made you get to that point to realize that you had to surrender when i felt like i couldn't go on but when i say that couldn't go on 
you feel like some days you can't take the next step. Not that I'm going to think about suicide. You know, right. I can say in right. all my years of life, I never, ever thought about suicide. No. Never. That was never an option. Um, there was a preacher in Indianapolis I always say, suicide is a temporary problem. To a per it's, a, it's, a, it's a permanent solution to mm -hmm. a temporary problem. That's what it is. And he nailed it. But what I can say for people that think suicidal thoughts, they just need mental assistance at that point. Mm -hmm. But then some are so deep in depression that they don't really know how to come out of it. Right. And that's why I drive home mental health. We're not crazy. No. No. Nope. It's just stressed just out. There you go. We're stressed. <laughs> and you just asked me that question. How? That was my point. I was stressed mm -hmm. to no yeah. end. I knew at that point when my doctors told me you either live or you die. Mm, mm. When four specialists tells me that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And at that time, let me explain to people what stress can do to you. Mm. I was on 13 medications. I was on, um, I, I had asthma due from stress and smoke oh, inhalation, my. which I'm allergic to smoke now. I was on a summer court inhaler. I was on a nebulizer every four hours. Mm. I was on pro air and believe me, had nitroglycerin in my purse. Now, when I had to reflect back on that, mm. that was not me. Wow. Was, wow. So you hear me loud and clear. Mm. I, never exposed, I never exposed my personal life, but God said, right, right. tell your story because you are my greatest inspiration. And for God, I am. God say, be a bold soldier. Yes. And you know what? I'm going to be. I'm mm -hmm. going to be the day I die to be an advocate for my health and for others. Because yes. if God gave me my health back, I'm going to be the bold soldier on the army field for him. Yeah, that's right. And I say I am a Christian. <laughs> Not one to say that, but the one to walk it. And Absolutely. to be out in front of the world and have, yes. have no... Uh, Embarrassing about who I am mm -hmm. or what I've been through. Nope. That's only by the grace of God I'm where I'm at today. Yeah. You see where I was. If you read my book, Broken But Still Yes. Not, yes. People always say they can't put the book down. Well, you know why? Because God's That's got just, his hands on it. Yeah. And 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 it's relatable. Yes. You know, I mean, every everybody can relate to something in in, in the book. Because because we we've all we've all that, that's a part of our story. You're right. It's something in that book that you can relate to. I don't care mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. uh, your health. I don't care if it's your uh, difficulty in finances. I don't care if it's your uh, childhood. I don't care if it's the uh, marriage issues. I don't care if it's divorce. I don't care if it's emotional abuse. I don't care what it is. It can be something. I don't care if it's something positive. Like you had a, like my family was loving growing up. I still have mm -hmm. positive vibes in my life throughout throughout all the trials and tribulations I've gone through. I still have positive vibes throughout. I still have those inspirational friends. I still have positive people. I still have my family to care of me. Family mm -hmm. love. Family to me is everything. Yes. My family to wait. Still, 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 10 of us still alive. That's only by the grace of God. And we're all yeah. doing well from 79. My sister's turned 80 this year. Wow. I turned 79 all the way down to 61 years old. My brother is presently now. And we are thankful and we're grateful by the grace of God that we're still yes. here. Yes, 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 yes. So um, let me ask you another question. How, how, uh, how's your journey going in reference to uh, being off the medication that you, that you got off of and uh, your, your routine is, as far as um, exercise? I know that you don't have a strenuous exercise program, but what is it that you do so that you can keep yourself moving? I have to, I don't, I don't go to the gym because uh, mm -hmm. by my physician's requirements, right. I can't go in groups of people. Mm -hmm, I can't right. go to church, so I do everything uh, online right now. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I go ex exactly about my what my specialist tells me to do because I have been very fortunate not to get COVID-19. 
Yeah. And I, uh, we're double masked down here in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. We have a, well, there's a new strand out right now of the virus. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get the vaccine right now. So I mainly stay in, but how I get my exercise, as you asked me, um, I dance to music. Good. I turn on uh, the TV to, to a, uh, aerobics or it's a dance mute. It's a dance station you do. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it can be gospel. It's gospel, or it may be. Uh, I love Tony Braxton, the Davis <laughs> record. Um, my uh, niece up in, um, I, she has his Zuma classes. And then there's another niece that lives in uh, Greensboro. She has Zuma classes. So they're online, and I have another niece that's got her art, her studio. So okay. I look at their videos, and they're on. Um, Instagram and they're on Facebook. So I go to their sites and I just look and I do the moves what they do. Now I can't always keep up, but I right, at least right, try. Right. But yes, most of the time yeah. I just turn, you know, the high music of dance music yeah. on and I just move yeah. and just, you know, keep my little pace mm-hmm. going. But mm-hmm. I but I do have to get up from the desk every hour or so and scratch my legs. Now I did type not at one time. My book was done in 30 days. I typed 53,449 words. But however, I had to have braces on my wrist. So I went and get copper tuna syndrome. Not times I had to record it because I got tired. Fatigue, mm-hmm. not tired, but fatigue. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. Fatigue with us as my sinus patient means that it has to wear away. It can't go over, go away overnight. Mm-hmm. Like if I get my body stressed out, I can't just say I'm tired and I go to bed and I get up and I feel refreshed. It right. means that I have to give my body a rest, but the fatigue wears away. It take, may take a few days. Yeah. So when I put that temporary sign up, like I went away last weekend, that meant that my body was in the bed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Resting, resting. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And and that's that's really uh, important, especially when you're fatigued and not tired. Correct. It, it's, it's a big difference. So, so how has the change um, in your... Uh, lifestyle since you've been off the medication how has it made you feel how do you feel physically I feel more energetic I feel I'm living my thin life um I can't say that enough <laughs> um when you say you live in your authentic life meaning that you feel better you look better even mm-hmm. though with no makeup on I still look better yeah I don't look worried um if you, this is what I always t- tell people, self-reflection in the mirror, mirror is who you really are. I'm not trying to be anyone else. Don't want to be. I'm 62. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of who God has made me thus far. And I'm still in the transformation mode by him. Um, we're always been transformed. We're never, ever at that destination. Never. Uh, each day is a day that we wake up and say, thank you, God, we're alive. Uh, I have to say on my platforms, I do thank God. I don't really tell you how your power, because without God, I'm nothing. Um, you know, on some uh, people, websites, they may not say God, but I'm one to say I'm going to. Yeah, absolutely. Because by God's grace that I'm still yes. here. That's and I'm right. Too. I'm a my size warrior. I'm a breast cancer conqueror, and I'm mostly abuse of rights of a victim. So with all that being said, through all that, I am still here. Yes, and you look fabulous. You look so wonderful. I just want to show a couple of your um, okay. pictures when you were um, when you were uh, when you had gained the ninety five pounds. Do you yes. see the picture? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at the smile, though. I know. And people don't, they don't realize what's behind the smile. Yeah, you keep smiling. My smile is gen- is genuine. It's just there because it's a reflection of how you feel on the right. inside, regardless mm-hmm. of the circumstances mm-hmm. that surround mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you have those, your oh, my family's the depth of my heart. As long <laughs> as you have that, and I know I have my son that's always right by my side. Yeah. As well as God is at the forefront of my life. Um, there is, the word says impossible. I look at the word says impossible. Yes, 
That's what it says. That's what, how I look at it. So if you put that into words, I had affirmations through when I was going through those difficult times up on my mirror. Mm -hmm. Believe me, written in a Sharpie. It says, keep praying. Prayer changes things. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. I mm -hmm. can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that last affirmation brought me through. Yeah. I, people don't realize that what we tell ourselves every day can either tear us down or build us up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you we know you're, abs that. you're absolutely right Greta mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to say that those positive vibes you give yourself I, I meditate every day mm -hmm. I get up every morning I read my book I read my bible um, I'm not an out front person be shouting glory hallelujah all the time I'm very quiet I'm very quiet when I'm meditating with God because mm -hmm. that's my one on one time I meditate mm -hmm. at night I meditate throughout the day I thank God each and every day that I wake up. I, I, I thank God each and every day that I'm going through my daily living of life because I do get fatigued. People don't see that. Okay, good example. Behind the scene, you say, what are some of the side effects? Like at night, I have to sleep with even a um, blanket over me. Even though it's hot in Florida, I go outside. But at night, I sleep with a blanket because Probably my side is I have radon phenomena. Uh, it's our blood vessels constrict in my hands. I have mm. a neuropathy in my left side uh, that came with the shingles that I had when the cold weather day erupted. Um, in Indianapolis, when I lived there, the cold weather was not good for my body. Mm. That's why I had to relocate to Florida and I immediately retired. Um, when I say I retired, I retired because of my health. That was one of the reasons. But also, once I did, I felt that that was not the core of my being. That's when I launched the 5013 nonprofit organization because I wanted to go back. Um, through school, I always want to be something as far as helping people. Mm -hmm. I reflected. I looked back and saw all the committees I was on. Yes, and I know. Like, huh? <laughs> I even through church activities, every church that I've gone to as through my life, I would say childhood to my adulthood, I've served on ministries. But, you know, as I get older, we can't serve on, I, could, I don't know how I did this. But when I was really diagnosed with polymyositis in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I was on 10 church committees. I worked full time. I took care of my son. For 10 years, been single parent, did not miss not one of his football games, high school, home all way. And I look at myself and flip, how did I do that? I know, huh? I know. <laughs> That's when footprints came into my mind. Yes, That's the yes. Time he carried me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. I want people to know that. Even though we go through our trials and tribulations of life and our challenges, and they're difficult, believe me. Oh, yeah, not, they are. They're, it's not a light load. Uh, I, believe me, I'm not sitting in this chair saying it's easy now. It's not. I mean, I cry to sleep myself many nights wondering how was I going to get through the next day or the next second. Yeah. But, you know, when you go through times of sickness and Someone leaves you nine times sick and they're supposed to be that partner in your life that's supposed to be the first one to take care of you. Yeah. Then you ask yourself, am I with the right person? Mm. And you talk to God and you ask me, when was it time? <laughs> uh, and that's when I said, let go and let God. And God yeah. had to direct me out of that last challenges yeah. in my life that I had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it really just came down to uh, you or the situation. I mean, that was that's really what it came down to. Um, that's, that's and, and to have, yeah, and to, to have um, to have to face that, um, you have to choose you. And I had to choose. You're right. I had to choose me because, mm -hmm. you know, we always want our marriage to be happily ever after. And I really thought that one thought that was going to be the right one. But, you know, we always don't know what the future holds, <laughs> but we know who holds the future, holds right? The future. That's right? So I've learned to lean on him more than ever uh, to guide me, to direct me, and yes. direct my path. 
Yeah. And that's also with my health, because as you say, Greta, our health, your health matters. It does. And, and when you explain those six pillars of health, you nailed it. Yes. Because I can yes. relate to it with mm -hmm. my health issues that yes. I had and the health issues that I still carry on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're not as they were, but I know how to um, control, pace myself. Yes. Yeah, and manage. Right, manage is the mm -hmm. key word. Manage, <laughs> manage. You manage. have to manage. Yeah. Right, manage it, meaning that learning to say no graciously mm -hmm. is not a it's not a good mm -hmm. time. And you know that was yes. the most difficult thing for me to do. Yeah. Because I always was a yes person, trying to be that person mm -hmm. to everybody. Yeah. And at that point, I found myself I can't anymore. As much as I want to, I had to really look at my health and say, my Ushi, look at yourself in the mirror. Now you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's yep. self-care. Yes, it is. And it's very important. And, and that's why I wanted to, for you to share your story because um, you, you have more challenges than the average person. Mm -hmm. But if you can overcome mm -hmm. and beat the odds, then for someone who has, you know, something that is not as severe as what you have been uh, challenged with, um, if you can come out of that, then I want them to be able to see you and know, wow, you know, because I mean, when you were talking, I'm just sitting here saying, oh my God, you know, just not, I mean, I, I, I really know that I'm blessed. And, and when I say that, because, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have the health challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have, I, you know, I haven't been on any of the medications, you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's different for me. So to hear someone, you know, say what you said. And, and I mean, I'm just listening to your words and it's like, wow, so just blows me away. And I look at you now and it's like, it's incredible. I know. It's incredible. It really is. So, so I'm so glad that you took the time to, to talk to, to the audience so that they can see that um, they too can overcome their challenges and, yes. and live a life of, of lifestyle mm -hmm. of, of health. That's true. Of good yeah. health, you know. Yeah, good health. Uh, because, and, and I tell them they can. Yes. And, and it's, it's very difficult in the beginning, just the beginning part, as you stated. So other <laughs> than that, I think, you know, and you're a great coach because you, you're a great inspiration to me. I look at your platform all the time and I, um, I try to say something every time I see it because it's so inspiring. And that's what keeps me moving is send the inspiration coming from you. Coach yeah, I appreciate that. And, and you know what? And, and that's why I do it, because I don't know who um, may be having a day where they just feel like, oh, my God, I just can't go anymore. And then they see something that I post and it just gives them that extra push. And, you know, and, and like you, I think I'm on, um, I don't know, probably like nine, ten yes. platforms, you know, because like in the yes. mornings when I when I just say good morning, you know, I go to just on Facebook alone. I'm like on, you know. Uh, seven different that's right pages and then I have yes. to go over to Instagram then I have to go over to Twitter and yes. so I understand and, and that's time consuming and I don't it's think very. people understand you know that I'm giving my time because it's something that I want to give I want people to yes. to get something from it so so yeah it may take me a good 20 to 30 minutes just to hit all the platforms just You're to right. say one thing but you know even <laughs> at Twitter like Twitter I don't go on <laughs> I usually usually try to get on in the morning, but since my yeah. schedule has been so hectic, lady, lady, later, um, it's been I can't get on to night time. But by that time, the international group is coming in, so they're right. saying good morning. They reared up to go, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm just coming on. Give me a minute here, and I have to say, okay, good night, good morning. I'm gone because exactly, the, yes, because and and Twitter is my largest platform. And you get bogged there longer yeah. because you're yeah. on the writer's lift. And they put you on the lift and you have to keep lifting. Like yeah. they're lifting now. And I got to I catch up tonight. But it, you know what? It took me two hours last night to catch up. Yeah. But yeah. See, yeah. they don't see that, see me doing no, that. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, they don't see me out front. So, exactly. You know, but that's what I say. I care. And I yes. want to you know Absolutely. I care about each of you. Yes. It's not like yes. I'm throwing my pitch up just to throw a pitch up. No, 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 no. I, no. I, I, I'm doing that to say I care. I want you to see what I'm doing. You can follow right. me on other sites, yes. which I'm gonna yes. put up there uh, on the platform soon. 
and you know, there's other things and forthcoming with me that God has truly blessed me just by writing my book. Yeah. And I mean, it's blessings. When I say I'm feeling overwhelmed, it's not bad stuff. It's the <laughs> blessings that flow from God yes. that's coming my way. But I still have to tell them I have to pace myself. I do yes, yes, because yeah. that's where my fatigue comes in. And, yeah. and what I do is when someone comes, I say, remember, I told you when you asked me to be on the platform, yeah. oh, yeah. I said, yes. I definitely will, but I'm booked out to this date. Mm -hmm. So be patient with me. And you were very, very patient with me. And so like now I'm booked out into the summertime. And so um, that's why I ask people to be patient with me because things are happening. So I don't tell yeah. people no when they ask me to come out because it, I want to be an advocate to help people yeah. like yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And I really do appreciate it because again, I, I believe that your, your story is going to be so encouraging to people so that they will be able to see that they too can um, have a, a lifestyle that that's worth living that, that they feel that they feel good and I'm not saying that you feel good every day of the week I'm just saying that you can feel better right you know and, and now you're feeling better and now you're able to do a little bit more and you're getting stronger every day and I just really 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 appreciate you just taking the time because I know that yeah. you're busy and we've been at this for about an hour <laughs> so I'm gonna let you go so you can go and just you know rejuvenate yourself but thank you so much I really appreciate you and I'm I can't wait to uh, share this it's going to be airing on Friday okay. uh, so uh thank you again for you're your very time. welcome I appreciate you. And listen, you take care of yourself. Go and take uh, take you a little nap. And uh, we'll talk real soon. All right. Take care. And thank you so much, Coach Greta. Thank you, Miles. Yeah, I appreciate you. Have a wonderful, blessed day. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.